Hey, deserving listeners, Love is Blind, Season 6, The Reunion. Let's check it out. Right, you're the pick me, you're the pick me girl. Don't you ask me. You saw me you crying with my heart broken. I'll have my you moment. Saw you saw me crying with my heart and broken. Yeah, I, I think Kwame is uncomfortable with confrontation. He must not watch a lot of reality TV. Because <laughs> maybe before I started watching reality TV four years ago, I would have been similar. But uh, I'm trying to figure, was it Jessica going after her? Calling someone a clown when you sat and told him shit about me in the pods the entire time, saying that I'm a pick-me girl, you're the pick-me girl. Right, you're, the pick me. you're the pick-me. Yeah, so Jessica says that. And yeah, I think I'd be more like, more like AD and say, well, I don't think we need to have this kind of conversation. Jessica and Laura, I believe, are very close. So Jessica's standing up for her friend. If I were Jessica, I would say something like, um, look, we can talk about that whole thing, but we're still talking about the problem of the two of you doing what you did. So if you want to talk about the pick me girl stuff, we can talk about that for sure. But don't change the subject. And that's all that this is. It's a smokescreen, right? They are now off of the topic of the two of them doing something that is wrong. They didn't have to do that. They could have had a conversation at the bar. I think I think Laura would have been okay with that for the most part. But neither one of them should have been in that car in that alleyway until five in the morning, five thirty. So she's distracting from that whole thing. So if I were Jessica, I'd be like, "Look, don't change the subject," or maybe yeah, just like, "Don't change the subject. We're talking about you right now." You saw me crying with my heart broken. I'll have my moment. You saw me crying with my heart broken. And you moment. Are you happy with? What is she saying? Heartbroken. I'm gonna turn on the the. Subtitle. You're the pick me girl. Right, You're stop. the pick me. You're the pick me girl. Don't even start. You saw me You're crying with my heart. You saw me crying with my heart broken. Okay, right. So she's talking about I'm not a pick me girl because I was in it to win it, and we're together now. So I wasn't just trying to manipulate. But I think technically, if I'm gonna believe the CNN <laughs> definition of pick me girl, your heart could still be broken because you know I think. What CNN was saying was that pick me girl is when you are so desperate for male attention, you won't even necessarily be invested in getting attention to have a relationship, but you just want that validation. I think that was a part of it. But I think the way they're using it is you're falsely trying to be picked so you can go on the uh, on the getaway or something? Yes, I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Just like out. you said you would. Okay. Just like Let's you let said you would. Let's let it go. Woo. You are a pick me girl. Sweetie. Okay. You're not a girl's girl right. every day in your life. You're, you had your moment just like you said you would. Uh, so I wonder if Sarah in the pods said something like, I'm going to have my moment. She could have said that, but it could have been referring to, I'm going to have my moment to meet my soulmate. Could mean a lot. Of, I don't know. Just well, guys, Jeremy continues mm -hmm. to maintain that he was just talking with Sarah Ann until 5 in the morning. I'm curious to hear what you all... <laughs> They're really not letting him off the hook. I don't really care about this conversation because we're all in the same boat. They're the only ones that know. We don't know. And it doesn't matter because the transgression is there regardless of if they got together or not. Are you buying that story? I've I got enough on my plate. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy. So you're just trying to stay out of the way? I'm going to just, Chelsea, I'm just sit here. <laughs> I mean, I've never stayed up till 5 a.m. just chatting. Well, so. you guys saw me stay up. Get You've never stayed up to 5 a.m. just chatting? It's weird. This notion that somehow you can't be friends. As a heterosexual cis guy, I can't be friends with a woman. <laughs> I find to be a theme on a lot of these reality TV shows, and I find that to just be so regressive and sexist against everybody, not just women, but men too, on a variety of levels that I've been over a number of times. So I just want to hammer that forward. I'm sure you don't need to be told that, but I'm, I'm saying it. Walked out on by Matt. Is it that shocking that I was talking till five in the morning? Everybody knows I can talk. It's not that shocking. Sarah Ann. never invited into my- Oh, funny. So she's referring to how when she was in the pods with Matt and Matt just walked out on her. What I think happened, what my contact on the show told me, what she suspects is that Matt walked off because the speakerphone had a glitch and he couldn't hear her because he's like, oh, it's like talking to a wall, right? He walks out. I think that was that moment. And 
apparently that happens a lot where people will be on the couch and they'll they'll say like is anyone there i can't am i alone what's going on and we've seen that happen before where people will do that even though someone else is there right anyway she's referring to that it's like you know i can talk a lot and therefore i can stay up till five in the morning talking yeah again i just wish either one of them would say look I'm sure it's hard to believe that we didn't get together physically that night, but we did not get together physically that night. However, it was wrong that we were even in that car together and would raise questions about that. And it was a, it was wrong. It was at the at very least an emotional affair and that was wrong. So we deserve to be chastised for that, but we did not get together, but I don't expect any, you know, just say something like that. House. Sarah Ann, did y'all kiss? No, absolutely not. No. Okay. So well, Laura, what, what do you think hearing all this? They continue to make- And it would be a little bit more believable if either one of them would give a little bit more detail. You know, like if Sarah said something like, no, we didn't kiss. Um, I wanted to, but I also knew that that would, that would be a bad idea. And to tell you the truth, I, I didn't really know what was going on. He was still engaged to her so, and living with her. So I, I wanted to. If, if he had already broken up with Laura, I would have, but I was genuinely just trying to figure out if we were viable as, as a couple after the pods. You know, we, we spent a lot of time in the pods talking, and this was kind of a, an extension of that. And um, he never made a move on me, you know, just some kind of detail. But when they don't have any detail, then you wonder, because there would be a lot of details there. To be in a car for three hours or more, my dogs are barking, um, there's actually another dog barking. <laughs> My dog is answering. It's like for three and a half hours, you're in close proximity, probably some drinks in you. There's got to be some kind of thinking in the moment of each of them. You know, like if she said something like, well, I I wondered if we were going to kiss the whole time, but after we were just talking for like a half an hour, it just didn't really feel like that was the vibe because we were just really having a a long conversation. We were talking about this. We were talking about that. We were talking about this. And there's some kind of detail there. But when you don't have any detail, it, it looks like a lie because people who are lying have a hard time inventing believable details. So they just say as little as possible. No, we didn't kiss. What do you know? I know it didn't happen. Tane, they just talked till 5 a.m. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? I don't care. I don't care what they did till 5 a.m. I think they're both disgusting. <laughs> well, uh, but yeah, it, it, uh, well, I guess I don't really know what that means. But to me, if I were in her shoes, I, I would say, yeah, I don't care if they kissed or not. Uh, it was still a problem what they were doing. It was it was some sort of an affair, emotional or physical or both. I don't know. So it doesn't really matter if they kissed. If Jeremy was really the one for you. I mean, sure, I started having my doubts. You know, we started bumping heads a little, but at no point was I thinking, I'm not going to get married. Jeremy and I literally every day had to check in with each other on what our percentages are, whether we're 80%, 8 out of 10, 85% going to get married. That's interesting. That sounds believable, right? Details. And I'm glad that they did that. I would be doing that too. <laughs> that would be something that I'd be interested in having, those conversations, even if I wasn't on that show. Well, I, it's like, why would you even be less than 100% if you're almost about to get married? Anyway, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, but uh, that's interesting. So I believe her because details. And she hasn't demonstrated a pattern of lying. Married, and I mean, it never dropped below that. So to go from spending all... Wait, drop below what? Let's rewind. I'm not going to get married. Jeremy and I literally every day had to check in with each other on what our percentages are, whether we're 80%, 8 out of 10, 85% going to get married. And I mean, it never dropped below that. Okay, uh, her signal is a little choppy. So it sounds like she's saying he never said anything lower than 80%. And that, you know, it, it, that could have been true. And then upon seeing Sarah, he realizes something different, you know, it's, it's possible. He also could have been lying, I suppose, unknown. If I was to take a guess, I would say that if he was really honest with himself, he would have been below 80%, like 50 or lower. But I have a hard time believing that he was like 0% and lying about it. it. You know, I think a lot of people would think that was true. And it could have been. But anyway, so she's saying, I was under the impression that we were on our way to get married, that we were going to 
iron out the wrinkles and everything was going to be great. It's hard to feel that because the edit and the way they present, they don't have that affection on camera. They might have also edited that out. And I, my contact in the show I told me that, actually, because what my contact was telling me was that the showrunners, the editors, will tend to... Uh, for time's sake and maybe for narrative's sake, will edit out certain things or not include certain things because it's not important to them. And the story people were thinking, well, we don't need the audience to be pulling for this couple because we know that they break up pretty early after the getaway. So there's no need to show the nice moments, mean that we have to cut other things from other storylines. So will keep in the bits where it looks like they're having some tension. And there was a fair amount of innocuous footage, like when they're meeting hit her family. So I, I assume all that is true and that there was a lot of reasons why Laura would think that they're a good couple. And, you know, they bonded a lot in the pods. Because that's another thing, because if they edit out the getaway and the after getaway warm, affectionate moments between the two of them, they would also edit out the warm, affectionate moments in the pods. And so to us, at least to me anyway, it just didn't look like there was anything there. <laughs> it looked like they had no love for each other and, if anything, a lot of contempt for each other. Now, it's possible that they had a lot of affection and some prickliness and contempt at times. But when I hear this, it's like, really? The two of you are 80%? That's it? delusional but we only saw a portion of the story yeah i know exactly what you're referring to you're That's referring what your girlfriend said to ad at the list exactly so sarah dming jeremy coming out of the pods was obviously somewhat of a controversial move this season and we actually have some never before seen uh footage of you and laura speaking about it at the lake Ooh, i always like this <laughs> what they show never be seen ne never never be seen Four, what am I saying? Never before seen footage, let's see. All right, let's take a look at that clip. I'm here to take everything and I want you to unload it on me and give me everything. No, seriously, I really do. Because I, I think you deserve that. Okay, it's starting out well. This is a little redeeming for Sarah. I don't trust that Sarah will handle this well because she has not exhibited that, but this is a good opener. That's a good opener. I'm a little curious as to what Sarah's intention is exactly. I do want to talk to you about the message that I sent because I know that that came across so disrespectful to you. And I am sorry if I hurt you in any way. I really am because I don't want you to think that I came to ruin your relationship. Yeah, it's good. That's good. Uh, it could be better because it, 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 it kind of comes across the wording that I'm sorry that you're hurt, right? Kind of those non-apologies. You know, I'm sorry that you decided to get hurt about this, essentially. <laughs> you know, and it's possible that she doesn't actually mean that. So she could do better to emphasize that she understands that a lot of people in her shoes would have been hurt by that or that she would have been hurt herself if she were in lower shoes. That's one of the ways that you can demonstrate that you're not giving a non-apology. You're saying, I'm sorry that I, I'm sorry that your feelings got hurt and I'm sorry I hurt your feelings and it's understandable that your feelings were hurt. Even if you believe, eh, my feelings wouldn't have been hurt in that situation because I'm not sensitive to that or something. But if you extend empathy and are a little uh, aware of other people's experiences, you should be able to imagine that it, that it would hurt and would make someone angry and suspicious of you because it looks it, it has the look of someone who's trying to behind closed doors trying to ruin your life and your marriage you know i was just very i didn't get off my chest when i needed to yeah. he you know obviously was, was saying things to me that i've only told you this and blah 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 and whatever it was like i needed closure but i didn't know how to yeah. do that and then i thought if they're not married just yet should I just send the message now? So this is good. I, I, it doesn't excuse the whole thing, like I was saying earlier, but this is a lot better than the way she was talking to AD and the way she's talking at the reunion. And so this says to me that they, so they purposely didn't include this in the original edit, but they're including it here. So that, 
yeah, the the show is definitely saving her in this moment, <laughs> at least in my eyes, because without this, you just wonder, is she just another version of Jeremy? And I'm not going to lie. I was in the real world while you guys were there, yeah. and I was kind of heartbroken, and I was just yeah. like, I'm just going to send it and get it off my chest and move on with my life. Yeah. That's really what the intent was, and I hope yeah. you know that. Like. And the whole, like, if anything changes, let me know. That was, like, I was like, you know, hey, like, if it does change, like, I want you to know that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. It's totally understandable. You could argue that she shouldn't have been explicit in that DM, or she could have been more obscure about it, you know, just like, or she could have DM'd Laura as well, you know, to show that it's not behind her, her back sort of thing. Like she DMs Laura and it's just like, Hey, I, I, I was thinking about DMing Jeremy not to try to get him because I don't want to be that sort of person, but I just wanted to, I don't know, have some closure with him on some level. Um, I don't know what that means exactly. So how do you feel about that? You know, something like that. And I, I imagine Laura would have been fine with that. Sarah could say like I should have done that. I didn't think of that. I'm sorry, but I wasn't up to no good. I wasn't tr I wasn't scheming to ruin anyone's life. I I thought the two of you were going to get married in that I just missed my shot. I thought that I I was really angry at myself cuz I didn't express myself and I was lonely and wondering if well if they don't you know. Anyway. Like I would love the opportunity to get to know you. I know yeah. you read the message which yeah, yeah. I didn't send the message vindictively going, I hope she doesn't see this. I sent it thinking, that's his fiance. They're probably both going to read yeah. it. And then I thought what I knew about you, because I do adore you. I was thinking, yeah. Laura is a, is a grown, strong woman. She's probably going to yeah. be like... Okay, so this could all be true. Uh, and she could have done better at the time by actually DMing Laura. Like, at the very least, she could send the message to Jeremy and then immediately take a screenshot and send that to Laura and say, by the way, I just want to make sure that you know I'm not doing this behind your back. And I sent this DM and I, I, I'm not trying to undermine you or anything like that. Um, let's talk. So uh, she, it, it, it lends itself to a lie since she didn't do anything like that. You know, she's claiming that she wasn't trying to do it behind her back. And I don't know if it's just me and my life and the people around me, but I assume that she's telling the truth here. I think on the internet, there's this assumption that everyone is conniving or playing a game or is shady. And certainly there are people like that, but that's not the norm. And I, I believe her here and I wish she would have been better at communicating this. I'll also say she's talking a lot and not stopping for Laura to say, and Laura has literally said nothing <laughs> yet. Have him. Like, yeah. you know, I thought about it yeah. differently and I shouldn't have, yeah. and I assumed, and I'm sorry. You're fine. No, I really like, I appreciate you like even bringing it up. Do I think the message was dis disrespectful? I do. Yeah. I did. I was like, as a woman to woman, but I was like, at the end of the day, he made the commitment to me, not sure. her. That's good. Laura is saying, you're fine. And I don't think it was a it was fair. I don't think it was a good thing that you did that. And that was it. And I remember asking him when he did it, I was like, is there a world where like I turned you down or like I went another road to where you went, you proposed to her? And he said, absolutely not. But babe. Okay. Um, so was he lying? Was he 80% or more into Laura and he just forgot that he had feelings for Sarah or something? I think we heard the audience kind of laugh in that moment, and it wasn't really a thing to laugh at in this clip, so I wonder if something happened on stage. I don't know. Little fucking clown robot in the pods. And like who he said he was and how he handles situation and how he conducts himself as a man and a human mm -hmm. being, Sarah Ann is not how he, he hasn't shown me in an ounce of that since really? he's been out of the pods. Like you think he's like an all talk, and then like 100%. once you're in the situation. 100%. It's interesting, because it looks like Laura is trying to help Sarah by saying, I think you need to watch out for this guy. <laughs> yeah, I, and the way Laura is painting him, it's possible, especially given the allegations that we heard from Ginger Springs or something on, on TikTok. You know, it's possible, and I typically don't have those hypotheses that 
someone wakes up in the morning and says, ha-ha, although that's not even necessarily the hypothesis, or that he is that lacking in empathy that he would uh, be that callous and that uncaring and that dismissive, so dismissive of other people's feelings. Um, but that that is possible given all the allegations and the presentation on the show. So I, I guess if there has been a time when someone has been characterizing someone as this way, I, I guess what Laura is saying is a layperson's way of describing that. But I don't think that he, it isn't the top hypothesis for me that in the pods he was in a callous, unemotional way playing these women, that he was just trying to trick both of them. Now, Laura, in this moment, I don't fault her for thinking this in the moment because this is all the way back then. And Laura has a lot of reasons to believe that Sarah will be treated very similarly, right? But after Sarah and Jeremy are together for a year, who knows if that's accurate, you know, the two of them, Sarah and Jeremy, have reasons to fabricate that or obscure problems in their relationship because it potentially kind of vindicates the two of them if they can manage to stay together. So hard to know, but I assume that their relationship at this point is legit. I don't know. Um, but for Laura, it makes sense that she would think that way. But I, but I do think that, uh, that my top hypothesis is that he had his version of love or attraction or wanting to be with both of them because that happens on the show sometimes it's like oh well there's this person and there's this person. and when he proposed to laura i think that he was probably mostly legit if we believe even half the allegations against him there's a chance that he doesn't really have the ability to self-reflect and really know what he's doing and he could have just been swept up in the moment i think we've seen a number of people do that uh, for various reasons on the show you know, because he seemingly showed very little actual love and care when push came to shove, right? He, we just saw him drop Laura like a sack of potatoes, like without almost any provocation. So you think, well, he couldn't have actually had feelings for her because look at what he did. But it's possible that he actually did in his way. And he has defenses that will kick in and turn things off, or he has defenses in the moment that don't allow things to get really developed affection-wise or attachment-wise. So I think a lot of things can be true here. You know, the way that the internet talks about a narcissist, and I've been over this already, I won't bore anyone with it now, but it, it's a cartoon version. It's essentially like a, a villain in a horror movie or a villain in, a, in some kind of thriller movie or something. And those people... Yeah, I guess they exist. But my hypothesis is even someone like Ted Bundy actually had a human need for attachment. If you study his story and the accounts of a lot of people involved, before he started killing, when he was a young man, he was deeply attached to a woman that he continued to have a lot of positive feelings about. She, I think, broke up with him. And yeah, she broke up with him and it destroyed him. And then the anger and revenge. I'm not saying Ted Bundy is a relatable good person. No, 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 no. <laughs> and I'm not saying he didn't have psychopathy and sadism and sexual sadism and narcissistic personality disorder all wrapped up in one person. I mean, my goodness, one of the most psychopathic people on the planet, one of the most narcissistic person people on the planet, one of the most sadistic people on the planet. And at the same time, even him, I believe, had the human need for affection and attachment. And it's not as if you can be a very large problem to society. It doesn't mean that you don't also have a, a wide range of aspects to your personality, including things that we can relate to. You know what I mean? So I think that there's a, I would assume that for Jeremy, I'm not saying Jeremy is like Ted Bunny, by the way. In all aspects. Just be careful, you know? babe. Like the guy, as far as I'm concerned, is not who he said he was. Yeah. Like, to say that like, you love me as much as you do. And like, I was it no matter what. And to throw you fucking under the bus continuously. Like it's, 
Yeah. The guy likes attention. Yeah. I mean, that last bit, it's hard to know if that's accurate. It could be. But that first number of statements, yeah, that is true. <laughs> you know, if you just look at his behavior, the disregard and the lack of consideration, uh, regardless of where it's coming from, was clear. To go from 80% and, and telling her and having affection that wasn't included to spending all evening with Sarah and then coming home and treating Laura like shit. Now, I suppose there's a version of the story that I'll allow for that Jeremy came home that morning and either was or was not planning on telling Laura about it. But when he was cornered or even mildly caught or something, he's like, okay, I'm going to come clean. And in the beginning, he had a little bit of compassion when the cameras weren't there. I don't even know if this is true. He was kind of alluding to that. And Laura got real angry, which is understandable. And she could be, you know, pretty prickly anyway. And so she might have been uh, fairly hurtful to him, even though he might have deserved it. And given his issues, he might have just shut down. And then by the time the cameras get there, he, you know, he has his sunglasses on, he's on his phone. And he's like, all right, you know, they're both in their zones post fight. So the way that it looked was even more, I'm not saying he was like this overflowing person of affection and love and remorse, but there might've been a little bit of it, right? Uh, but I don't know because he never presented that when later that day he's at his mom's, there was none of that. And it's possible that was edited out, but it didn't look that way. And then he's had multiple opportunities right here on the reunion to show that. So, yeah, I don't know. Since he, that night happened last Saturday, all he's been fucking talking about is his image and how he looks worse than Jimmy. So I don't know why the fuck he came on this show, but it sure as fuck wasn't for a marriage or for fucking love because he's not. I believe that. In fact, I also don't necessarily blame Jeremy. I think it's completely rational and maybe even good business sense for everybody to think how they're going to come across and how it's going to be edited. You know, they're they're all living this very complicated, multifaceted story, all of them. And you just have to wonder, like, how is this going to be edited? <laughs> what are they going to focus on? And hopefully they'd, they'd say, I don't even know how I come across the people. I've never videotaped myself interacting in situations like this. Maybe I'm coming, you know, like for, with Ken, he discovered like, whoa, that's what I, not only did I not know how this is going to be edited, but I didn't even know that I looked like that. Like, ugh, Ken, Ken was saying that. So I think it's totally rational that, that people would consider that. And I think that you'd be weird not to. It would almost be like, irresponsible not to think about you know it, it, at the end of that spectrum if someone goes on the show and says um i'm not even thinking about how this is going to come out because i don't care you would look at that person like are you naive this could ruin your life you got to keep at least a little bit of attention on that detail because you could ruin everything <laughs> you could ruin your career you could ruin the rest of your life everything could be ruined so you might want to keep a little bit of concern about that. Not so much that you're not being real and not allowing the experiment to work. But but anyway, so what she said, he was saying that, that Jimmy's going to look better than him. That's interesting. <laughs> that he was comparing himself to Jimmy as opposed to Johnny. I think he would be comparing himself to Johnny. <laughs> I don't know why he thought he was... I thought, why would he think that him and Jimmy were in in, in competition? I don't know. Um, maybe because he's like, well, no one's going to compare to Johnny, but second place is me and Jimmy. <laughs> I don't know. Wow. I am literally blindsided mm -hmm. at who this person said that he was. Yeah. And like, just watch yourself. Yeah. So in the edit, Sarah's listening and and agreeing or at least saying with her body language that she understands why Laura would think that way. So it's all, it's all positive. I don't see why they can't have that on stage right now. And it feels like. <laughs> what do you think Laura meant by saying that Jeremy was worried he'd look as bad as you? I remember 
me having a really tough decision, I'm sitting here in the pods, I'm like, for days, hours, it felt like. Oh, I see. So I think what Jimmy is saying is that Jeremy saw Jimmy as a similar sort of figure in that he was trying to figure out between two different people. And so Jeremy was worried that he was going to look bad because he had to dump someone. Is, is that a, because Matthew seemed to be also hinting at that, that, that maybe they had a conversation about that, or is that a known thing that you would have a problem like that on the show? And if, if you're, yeah, I think someone else said something like that. And I just think like, I don't think that's true. If you handle it right <laughs> and you break up well and you say, I'm so sorry that I hurt you. You know, I'm trying to think, I, I remember thinking that someone handled it pretty well, like with Zach and Irina and Bliss. At least I don't remember thinking that Zach screwed up the breaking up with Bliss part. So I'm guessing that Zach broke up with Bliss well enough. Yeah, I mean, you know, you get my point that I, I don't think that just having two people that you're deciding between automatically means that you're going to look bad. So that's interesting. So what Jimmy is saying is that Jeremy was saying that Jimmy is going to look bad in the pods because he's trying to figure out who he wants to be with. Anyway. Everybody else picked me up that day, and Jeremy said, at least I can sleep tonight knowing Jimmy's the villain. When I had a okay. decision to make, okay. and everybody else was picking me up, and that was the word you left me with. Okay. That's true? It, I don't recall saying that. But uh, wow. So this is interesting. Jimmy is calling him out and still has feelings about this. And... Yeah, I could see that. Jimmy's struggling and has emotions and a heart and empathy. He has a hard time showing it because he shuts down, but I think he does like anyone else would. And he's really stressed out. And I think he, Jimmy, has a particular problem with that kind of guilt of disappointing people. And I think that's why he really shut down with Jessica and screwed up the breakup with her. So yeah, I could see, and I think it actually caused him to go into denial or to avoid the whole thing, to kind of freeze in place because he waited till the very last moment. And technically he didn't even really tell Jessica that he wanted to break up with her. Uh, he, he just let the circumstance kind of provoke it in a sense. Anyway. So yeah, I just imagine you're Jimmy, you're just like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what am I, I, I feel bad, I feel, what do I do, what do I do? I feel bad, I feel bad, what do I do, what do I do? And then this jokey, flippant Jeremy walks into your field of perception and says, well, at least I know that he, that Jim, Jimmy, you're gonna be the villain. <laughs> yeah, it's totally consistent with the edit you know, the amount of jokiness that Jeremy would exhibit and when you piece everything together. And also it kind of points to the possibility that Jeremy has been the villain a lot in life because of his behavior, whether he is conscious of it or not. And he's oriented that way because he, he knows that he's often being accused that he's a bad person or that he does bad things. Because that's kind of a weird thing to focus on, right? It's like, well, at least I know, Jimmy, you're going to be the villain. Like, by implication, he's thinking, who's going to be the villain? Am I going to be the villain? And I just imagine most people on the show aren't thinking that, right? Like, Jimmy probably wasn't thinking, am I going to be the villain? Is someone else? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's, it's like Matthew and Jeremy talking a lot, <laughs> underdogs and all that. So, yeah. It's almost like they should have someone to talk to just to keep their mind in the right place while they're in the pods. Like if they hear the cast members talking this way, the producers should, and maybe they do, they should approach them and say like, hey, you know, we heard you say something about villains. Um, are you concerned about that? Like what what's going on? And, you know, I would advise that you kind of stop focusing on that because if you just go through the story, well, because I was going to say, the producer should say, you'll be okay, but the producers might know. There's a chance that this person's going to come off, come off as the villain. Anyway. Days, hours, it felt like. 
I remember all the other guys, Ken, everybody else picked me up that day, and Jeremy said, at least I can sleep tonight knowing Jimmy's the villain. When I had a decision okay. to make, okay. and everybody else was picking me up, and that was the word you left me with. Okay. That's true? It, I don't recall saying that, but if I did say that, I was... Clearly it was on your mind. You're still talking about me and your own relationships and stuff. That's how you view... It sounded like Jeremy was going to apologize in a sense. He's like, I don't remember saying that, but if I did say that, I shouldn't have... I think he was about to say, I'm sorry about saying that. I don't know. Me. No, I, I understand that. And if I did say that to you, I'm sorry for saying that to you because it was not meant to be anything serious. That's that fair. Was... You feel a little burned by that? Yeah, I think that's fair. I, I think that he might not have been super focused on villainhood. And with the amount of just rapid fire joking that he exhibited, it might even be his way of dealing with discomfort in the room or something. And uh, he just... He's firing jokes left and right, jokes, I put in quotes, all over the place. And then he sees that, and he just fires that one, and he just, he didn't mean anything by it. But it doesn't mean that it's really hurtful and annoying and problematic that you would think that a joke would be appropriate in that situation. But it might not mean that he's like, ooh, I'm going to get Jimmy right now. Seems like it. It is what it is. Jeremy's the least of my concerns right now. <laughs> <laughs> I am sorry for saying that. Well, AD, you had some... So, I'll give kudos when I see it. That was good. That Jeremy didn't make any excuses. He just said, I'm sorry for saying that. It would have been nice to have a bit more. He could say, I have a problem with joking around too much. And I use jokes as a way to avoid things. And I must have been... Struggling that day, it's not an excuse, but I can see that happening. And and I'm, but he did. That that looked sincere, right? I'm sorry that I said that. He could have easily said what he was saying earlier and say, um, "What are you talking? I didn't say that. It's stupid. That's not what I meant." Or do a smoke screen or something. All right. Well, that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself truly, because you deserve it. You really do.